I want to attack. Alright, so we get in two extra damage. That's really greedy. But it will pay off hugely this, this time around. Because Nif Mizzet is hitting the battlefield right now. As a 7-7. And he will draw us two cards. Alright, <laughs> opponent conceding right away. Uh, what, a, uh, what an awesome feeling that is. Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Lenny and you are watching Lenny TV. Today I have a really awesome fusion of a card into a deck and it's it's amazing. We basically run a Neoform Nif Mizzet deck which is already really awesome but we toss in Kalia and Kalia helps us to fetch for Nif Mizzet and I just realized I am dissolving because I'm wearing a green shirt and I'm using a green screen. Uh, but yeah, where the f hell was I? So we run a really fun Neoform Nif Mizzet deck that is including a Kalia for I guess more reliably finding him, but we also have Neoform, so we can Neoform Kalia, and it has some awesome plays. So make sure to smash that like and subscribe, hit that bell button to don't miss uh, any of my upcoming decks. If you enjoyed this one, you have to make sure to smash that bell. And without further ado, let's get right into the deck explanation as always. But this one is a little bit harder than usual, because five colors, I try to explain the mana base, and yeah, it's not that easy. Uh, I have one request or one question to ask you guys uh, as well. Do you think uh, you can actually play this in traditional ranked? Is there enough uh, sideboard cards to make this deck work? If you have any suggestions for sideboard cards or if you want to like suggest a more competitive list, I'm really open to see your suggestions or your deck lists. So please post them down in the comments below. And without further ado, I will already stop. Let's get right into the deck explanation. All right, everyone, we are in the deck builder, and this will be a, a, a real difficult deck to explain. I try my best to to go over every card, explain it as best as I can, and then we will show it off with some awesome gameplay. So let's jump right into the core strategy of this deck. So of course we want to play. Nif miss it as much as possible. Uh, it's a five color deck. Um, I will go over the, the mana base a little bit so that you guys can further understand uh, what is happening and why I built the deck the way I built it. Let's start off with the main component. So we want to play Nif miss it. His enter the battlefield effect lets you reveal the top 10 cards and we can essentially pick a Demir colored card. Demir is blue and black. And we can pick <coughs> an Azorius colored card, um, a Selesnia card, a Boros card. Um, essentially you can choose one card of each guild color from those 10 you reveal, put it in your hands. Sometimes you reveal maybe a Knight of Autumn, an Aurelia and a Trostani. And then you have to choose be between the Knight of Autumn and Trostani because you can only pick one card of the guild color. I hope I explained that well so that you can understand what Nif Mizzet is doing. So basically, it's a giant 6-6 six, six speeder. If you Neoform, if you put him into play by a Neoform, it's a 7-7 seven, seven gigantic dragon that can refuel your hand. So we want... Uh, a list that can play this card as fast as possible. For that reason, we have four Paradise Druids. The Paradise Druid helps us fix our mana and ramp. Um, for the same reason as we include the Paradise Druid, we have the Chromatic Lantern, which is a form of ramp and it fixes our colors. And uh, we run four copies of Neoform to allow us to get Nif Mizzet as fast as possible. Now, what Neoform does is, you can sacrifice one of these four cost cards to search your deck for a five CMC card, CMC standing for converted mana cost. And if you sacrifice one of these cards to Neoform, you can search for either Nif Mizzet. And I included two more cards in case you already have Nif Mizzet. Uh, and because of the legend rule, you can only keep one on the battlefield. Of course, you can repeat this enter the battlefield effect. But uh, if you want to get some extra value, you can 
get Yarok. Yarok being a great card in this deck because this card essentially doubles the enter the battlefield effects and there is a lot of them in the deck. It also helps against aggressive decks because it has lifelink and it also helps against big threats. I mean you have to sacrifice him uh, because it has death touch. You can throw this card in front of a really big threat, block it and it will die because of death touch. Now this is a, a somewhat situational card as well as Trostani. But if you are up against a, a deck that wants to steal all your stuff, Trostani will give them a real bad time. But it also helps a ton against aggressive decks. So you might see a pattern here. Trostani helps a lot against aggressive decks because it creates two, two, two white soldiers. Um, because they get plus one, plus one from Trostani. And they both have lifelink. So this helps a lot against aggressive decks as well as Yarok. Um, Enter the Gone Eternals is also a great card against mid-range creature decks. You can remove a big threat, but it also heals you for four. So it helps against uh, burn decks and aggressive decks as well. We have one board clear that is able to return if Mizzet or Trostani or any other card that has an Enter the Battlefield effect to our hand to replay them, but also wiping the board. So this is a board clear. You can play this only as a board clear, even if you don't have any creatures. Um, to return to your hand. But you can also save one of your creatures and replay them later to get the enter the battlefield effect again. So, as for four drops, we have uh, two guard mages. And these cards are really good. When they enter, they give you three life and draw a card. If you have Yarok, they give you six life and draw two cards. Um, we have two set of these scales because we want some cards that synergize with Kalia or Kalia, the Zenith Seeker. Um, this is an angel, so it can be fetched by Kalia. Uh, let's get into Kalia first before I talk about the other synergies. The second part, Nif, uh, let's say the smaller Nif Mizzet with a way smaller uh, fetching power is Kalia. But Kalia reads, if she enters, you may look at the top six instead of the top ten. And you may reveal an angel, demon, or dragon card. So you can fetch four. Seraph of the Scales, Aurelia, Nicol Bolas, the Ravager, uh, and Nif Mizzet. And you may put one of them into your hand. But you can choose one dragon and one angel. So if you reveal Nif Mizzet and Seraph of the Scales, you, get, you draw two cards off of this card. And that's also really strong. So we have the big Nif Mizzet effect and the smaller Nif Mizzet effect. And for that reason, I included two four drops in the form of Seraph of the Scales because they are angels, you can fetch them. And I included Aurelia as well. Uh, Aurelia is really strong with Nif Mizzet because she will give him Trample and Vigilance because he is white and red. Um, and we have one Nicol Bolas, it's a really strong dragon, synergizes with Kalia. And uh, if you have Yarok on the field, he will discard two cards, which is really strong, by the way. Um, and Hostage Taker will exile two things. Or one creature and one artifact. And Knight of Autumn will destroy two artifacts or two enchantments. Or gain you eight life or get plus four plus four. Uh, which is really good as well. So Yarok has some synergy in this deck. Uh, we have one removal card at instant speed. This is Hassan's Trophy and it can destroy every permanent. Um, yeah. So... The strategy is to... Uh, you play the deck as fast as you can. So you want to get Paradise Druid, Chromatic Lantern as fast as possible on the field. If you have a 2-drop, you can turn that with Neoform into Kalia. Search for Nifmizid, <clears throat> play him, and have some fun destroying your opponent. Or they might just concede, I don't know. But this deck is really awesome, is a lot of fun. And without further explaining... I hope I did a... W ah, I, f I promised to explain uh, the mana base. So, I want two. I want at least one green source on turn 2. For that reason, I included 13 green sources. I want at least <coughs> a red source, a white source, and a black source on turn 3. So if I have Kalia in hand, I can actually play her on curve somewhat reliably. For that reason, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 white sources. But on turn 3, I also have Paradise Druid. And the way you count these mana dorks is... You essentially count them half. So 4 Paradise Druid is 2 mana of the color you want on turn 3. 
in theory i don't know how that works mathematically um but that's how uh, i actually will link uh an article that explains this really really well uh credits to the man behind the article i forgot his name i'm sorry but uh i will link his article give him full credit for how i came up with the mana base and you guys will understand it a little bit better if you actually read the article it's really awesome in case you are wondering how to and how many colors should i put in the deck we have one two three four five six seven eight nine nine black sources nine white sources we have one two three six eight ten red sources i included one more red source because i have the spellbreaker as well and maybe i need one more red source so i can play him on turn three that's why there is one extra uh red source and uh yeah 13 blue 10 red 9 white 9 black um for Kalia. and i only included one two three six eight blue sources because we we don't really want to cast new form on turn two <clears throat> we maybe want to cast it on turn three uh, and where we really want to cast it is maybe really early on turn 4 if we have ramped really well. But most of the time it's turn 5. So to have 5... Um, to have 1 blue on turn 5 or 2 blue on turn 5. Let's say 1 because I only worry about Neoform. Um, we can count the Paradise Druids. So it's 8 plus 2 is 10. And the Chromatic Lanterns which is 12. So... If you want to cast this on turn 5-ish, 8 should be enough. And that is the theory behind the mana base, the deck. I hope I explained it somewhat decent. Um, and without further ado, let's jump right into the awesome gameplay that is coming now. Alright, our first opponent is Salty Inferno. He's playing as Tezzeret. And we are playing as Mu Yang Ling. We have a pretty good hand. We can start off pretty aggressive with the Zorta Goblin. And later on we can play Chromatic Lantern on turn 3 into a Guard Mage. Maybe into a straight Niv Mizzet Reborn on turn 5. <laughs> Sorry. So we are going to try and keep this. Another Niv Mizzet is not the best draw. Let's start out by... Playing the Temple Garden. So we have a white source in case we draw Kalia or Kalia. Uh, red. Red is not the color I'd like to see. Let's pay two life. I don't know what's actually better here. If we play Paradise Druid. We pretty much guarantee the guard mage next turn. I think ramping here, getting out the four cost card earlier, is stronger. So let's try and do that. With hexproof, we have a pretty high chance of Paradise Druid surviving. Especially on two mana. Sorry, I bumped my mic again. Alright, so we don't even have to shock in the land. We will play the elite guard mage. We'll gain back free life. So we are back to 21. And we will draw a card. Now the opponent finishes off uh, the paradise druid. But I'm fine with that. That means no lightning strike for the guard mage. I mean, he could have it on his turn, but not on my turn. So he would use two mana on his turn to get rid of the guard mage. And I'm fine with that. On three, there... Alright, he is just passing. Passing along. Alright, so if we play the Chromatic Lantern here... <coughs> we can shock in... Any land we wish. So let's get a black source in there. And let's play 
A Zurtar Goblin. Ah, uh, if he has a Chain Dweller, this is not much better as a free free. So I'm tempted to haste it in. Just swing for four. What the hell just happened? <laughs> he buffed my creature. Oh my god, I'm bumping in this mic a lot. Alright, our next opponent is Less So. He's playing as a Johnny. And we have a great hand. I just see this hand and I'm like, yep. We want something like this. We have Paradise Druid on turn 2. We have a Lantern. We have a Hostage Taker. We can new form the Paradise Druid to get Kalia. I'm set. This is the hand. Now wish me luck, wish me luck everyone. Let's pull this off. Let's start by playing a breeding pool. The great thing is we have a root bound crag, meaning we don't even have to shock in another land to play the Paradise Druid, which is awesome. We have a blue source. We don't have a lot of them. So we are quite lucky to get a blue source early on. And that way we are actually able to play new form. Uh, we got two blue sources, which is really unusual. That's the color I have the least amount of resources in. I will have to exile a card. Alright, what is the plan here? I think Knight of Autumn can go, right? Is Knight of Autumn... Yeah, I think Knight of Autumn. Next turn we can play a Hostage Taker. And I would like to try that. Alright, pick up another land. Alright, we will have to use all our mana here. To hostage taker the Knight of the Ebon Legion. Hopefully we will get to cast that next turn. And after casting it we can cast new form on the hostage taker. Get Myth Mizzet on the field and wreck our opponent. So that's really awesome. So let's cast the Knight of the Ebon Legion. Then we can actually play the Chromatic Lantern as well. And I want to attack. Alright, so we get in two extra damage, that's really greedy. But it will pay off hugely this this time around. Because Nif Mizzet is hitting the battlefield right now. As a 7-7. Seven, seven. And he will draw us two cards. Alright, <laughs> opponent conceding right away. Uh, what, a, uh, what an awesome feeling that is. Alright, the next opponent is... Kachlan94 playing as Chandra. And I hear a lot of cats spamming. What the hell? What's that? Did our opponent try to spam us out of the game? What is happening? What actually is happening here? Is this a bug on my side? I don't understand. What is going on? I think you guys can hear this, right? Is this some sort of new animation? No? Did it stop? That was weird. What the hell? What was that? So we are up against flyers. So we are in a lot of trouble. If we are not able to cast these creatures here. A lot of my creatures are flying so we maybe have a chance to defend here. At the moment we only take 2 damage. Might be more because there, on 3 mana there is a card. The Empyrean Eagle that will buff up all his flyers. 
But I don't think it was cat spamming. I think that got fixed. But I heard some weird... There is the eagle. We will take four already. Uh, luckily, Kalia is really strong. I think hostage taker might be better. Because we can steal this one without uh, the storm tamer on this turn. Now all we need is hostage taker to survive. And we have a pretty good chance of actually winning here. Because he will not get back his eagle. And we will be able to steal the eagle, play it next turn alongside a Zurtar Goblin. But still, we are already down to 13, my opponent up to 23. It's still not looking too promising. Alright, so he has a tap mana source, but there is the Conclave Tribunal. So he will get back his uh, eagle. And we will take 2 damage. Which is really bad. Alright, so we will... Alright, this doesn't matter, right? Because we can still play the Zortar Goblin. Because this taps for any mana. We don't find Nif Mizzet, but the animation is really awesome. And uh, we will put a plus one counter on this. And now, uh, we are... We are actually in a lot of trouble. All the opponent needs is a card that buffs up his board. That's not enough. If, if, if he has the plus two plus two card, we are in trouble. I will trade away Kalia here. If we don't, we are dead way too quickly. And we will have another chance. Actually, what are we doing here? We can play another Kalia. But I think we should play Aurelia. Aurelia can defend against the Eagle. If there is a counter spell, there is a counter spell. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much GG then. We will hit for free one last time and say goodbye. We are getting stomped by birds. Uh, yeah, the opponent out tempoed us here in this one. Uh, and, but there is nothing we can do about it. So let's go on to the next one and have some fun. All right, Trinian playing as Chandra is our next opponent. I had to think a little bit about that name there. We have this is a real clunky hand, so let's take a mulligan. This one is real clunky as well, but uh, we are going to keep this one. We will toss one chromatic lantern back into our library, and we will start playing a temple garden. Tapped. Of course, we don't want to take damage for free. Uh, hopefully, we are up against the deck that is... That's actually good. That's actually really great. You can play Kalia on turn 3. And she is a really strong tempo card. So, her opponent is tapped stepped out we will shock this one in and play Kalia Xenoph Seeker we don't find any angels or dragons that's unlucky but it's still a 3-3 free free with vigilance and flying so our opponent has to answer this one or she will smack him for free now every turn Alright, so we're up against the Demir list. Of course, we saw the Broker of Blood already. That should have told my brain that we're up against Demir. Now I know for sure it's Demir. But I don't know if he has a sub theme. Mere Flyers might be one, or Demons. But why would you play blue if you play Demons? I'm not sure. Our opponent is taking his uh, time here to think about his next play. He has three mana available to him. And there is another chart, of course. He will have to discard one card. Because he didn't attack with anything. This might be a reanimator list. 
Yeah, this is a reanimator list. So luckily, we have uh, Trostani included because yeah, I played against these reanimator decks and there was nothing like there was nothing else that annoyed me that much. I just think this uh, reanimator agent of treachery list is way too annoying. So I had to include one copy of Trostani. Now the good thing is his Lich uh, will help him to discard cards he wants in his graveyard. But uh, he, he will not be able to block one of my creatures, so I have that going for me. Sadly, Bloodford Bones is coming out. And the Agent of Treachery will hit the field. Right, he will steal Kalia. We have a Niv Mizzet. I'm really unsure what is the best play here. I think we play the second Guard Mage. Hopefully we pick up another land. Alright. We enter that one tapped. <clears throat> we will pass the turn. Uh, and I have a plan. All we need is one Neoform. And then we can... Neoform one of the Guard Mages into Trostani. And uh, destroy our opponent, hopefully. That is the plan. Now let's see if we can actually... Pull that off. This is the matchup I've included the Trostani for. Because I find this deck to be really annoying. Alright. So the play next turn can be if miss it. But it also could be Yarok. I don't know. Should we be greedy? I don't think so. We will play Nif Mizzet in hopes to get a new form. We find a new form. We draw three cards. That is really awesome. Now we will we will not attack. We'll have to discard two cards. One of them I think should be the Paradise Druid. The other one should be the Surtar Goblin. At this point we don't actually need them anymore. And we can start thinking about killing our opponent somehow. Now I think he will steal Nif Mizzet. Yeah, so now he will steal Nif Mizzet. But I'm fine with that actually. <laughs> because on my turn I will Neoform the Guard Mage into uh, Trostani getting back Kalia and Nif Mizzet. <laughs> And I will threaten lethal next turn. He will need to steal a lot of stuff. No! If he takes the new form, we are screwed. He takes the Yarok. He is greedy like that. But uh, he doesn't expect the Trostani, of course. Who would expect Trostani? I'm actually really happy. Uh, to... Yeah, you can attack. You can draw an extra card, put something in your graveyard. I think I got this one. I I would have found another near form next turn, so his fate was sealed from the beginning. We will start off by sacrificing the guard mage to my new form, and what we will get is Trostani. Trostani will enter the battlefield, <laughs> create two soldiers, and we will. Play another Gruel Spellbreaker as a 4 4. No, actually, it's a 5 5. We will get back Niv Mizzet and Kalia. And yeah. I, I have to ping nice once. Because I'm so proud of myself. I put Trostan in. Because I knew there there is these. Uh, these Revival Agent of Treachery steel decks. And I don't like them. I want to have one answer to them. In the form of Trostani, and Trostani doing a great job at shutting this deck down. It's insane. It's insanely fun, to be honest. Alright, sacrifice an agent. You can steal another card. Oh, Willis, Broker of Blood. That is actually a scary card. I don't know if you can beat that. 
can pay two life to minus one, minus one the creature. So he would need to pay a lot of cards. Uh, he would need to pay a lot of life to destroy the Trostani. But he needs to get rid of Trostani, otherwise we will get back our cards over and over again. Alright. I wanna... So the... the fi I wanna <coughs> play Aurelio here. Uh, and when I enter combat, I wanna give the buff to Nif Mizzet. So that means that our opponent cannot trade uh, with Nif Mizzet for free. Good thing is uh, the Spellbreaker has Trample. Uh, we will swing with everything, I think. Now, if we find an Assassin's Trophy, we can even get rid of uh, the Broker of Blood. And our opponent is taking his time here. Maybe he has some removal? But first he would need to kill... Rostani. And he cannot actually do that. He needs five... Sources of black mana to pay ten life. Alright, so we we go all out. We swing with everything, except Trostana here. And our opponent is really salty, I think. Because um, he's for sure taking his time and roping me a little bit here. It's not the worst I've seen, but it's definitely bad. Maybe he's watching some YouTube videos while he is playing. Uh, and that's okay. Alright, so we will swing with everything because I don't want my opponent to be able to pay 10 life to get rid of the Trostani and then steal some of his creatures back. So the Broker of Blood has to block Nif Mizzet. Oh? So that's a guaranteed 13. Alright, so my opponent down to 2 health. Oh, my opponent drawing 13 cards. Oh. Maybe I misplayed here. <laughs> I gave my opponent his whole deck. Um, but he needs to deal with everything right now. We have three flyers, so he needs to steal three creatures. And he needs to deal with the Trostani. Otherwise, we are, we are winning this one. What is my opponent doing? He maybe got a Raskas Contempt to exile Trostani at instant speed? What else might there be? Actually, he might not run Raskas Contempt because the exile is somewhat anti-synergistic with his strategy because if he exiles my creatures, he cannot steal them. Alright, so he has 8 mana. It's quite scary. But... Down to three, he needs to deal with every single threat and keep his broker of blood. Deal with Trostani because otherwise the stuff that he wants to steal will be on my side of the field after his end step. So I think they are even ready to attack next turn. So, Trinian, do you have an answer here? For Trostani and our free creatures. Actually, the biggest threat, Nif Mizzet with an Aurelio buff, has Trample. As well. Ooh! How much damage is that? Is that lethal? Alright. It did no damage at all? He had no creatures? Alright. I think I got this one. I'm pretty sure this is game over. We have three flyers. He cannot block everyone. And we will just swing. Yes! We beat the treachery deck. Oh man, that is so satisfying. Trostani against the opponent that wants to steal everything I have. This is the most satisfying thing ever. And now we will swing for the glorious victory against him. Or he will concede. But one of these things will occur. 
So he is for sure wasting a lot of time. He's searching for something. Doesn't find. And there is the conceit. How satisfying a win is is that? Awesome. Hey, Lenny here. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do. Smash that bell, drop a like, and subscribe. Now I will leave you with a choice. The top video is my recommendation for you, and the bottom one is from YouTube. Now go check them out and tell me which one you enjoyed more.